Hello, everybody. We are back after a little three-week sort of unplanned hiatus. I had really bad connections over the last three weeks, so I couldn't do it. But we gathered everyone back together today. We've got all kinds of stuff to talk about. We'll talk about uh, the new Google Plus interface, have some tips and tricks for you. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the Apple's new announcements with their new crazy iOS stuff. Uh, we'll talk about Lightroom 5, because uh, that's officially out, I think, as of today. Is that right, Thomas? This yes. morning. As of this morning, yes, it's official. Lightroom 5. Yeah, this morning. And uh, maybe we'll talk about the crazy prism stuff, and uh, then we'll hear all about Chris Chabot's new situation. That's a key to drink, uh, <laughs> Mr. Gino. <laughs> and uh, and we'll just we got all kinds of stuff going on. Well, let's start with intros, so you know who's here and who's who's hanging out with us. Uh, my good friend Thomas Hawk, you go first. Yo yo yo! Hey, uh, I'm Thomas Hawk. That's it. <laughs> all right, and you have the internet right there beside you. I do. The internet's running in my house. I think it has the entire internet right there. No, just a little piece of it. Is that even safe? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's fireproof. No. All right. By the end of the show, he will become Locutus. I think that <laughs> yeah. is eminently yes, possible. Yes. Okay, we'll just continue with introductions left to right. Uh, Chris, who just got back from London, what's up? Hey there, so I'm Chris Chabot. The last time I did introductions here on the show, and thanks again for having me here, uh, I introduced myself as working the Google Plus project. Nowadays, that has changed, though, when I left Google and I started my own startup called Snapsation. So Snapsation is an online marketplace where people are looking for photographers and photographers looking for people can meet. Good introduction. Good work. Yay. Mm. We will hear more about this uh, this soon. By the way, I'm going to interrupt introductions, and I'm going to share my screen here so people can see uh, what's happening. Let me go here to screen share. Click on my browser. So everyone watching, um, if you want to join in our live chat room, if you just go to stuckincustoms.com, uh, there is a live chat window here, and you, we're all hanging out in there. Gino's cutting up and sure saying ridiculous things. Uh, but come join us. Come in fast because the, uh, the chat room fills up. All right. Do you want me to sweat during the show? Is that what you want? Yep. I just muted and it, it it wasn't me. Okay, here I'm gonna mute. See. Yeah, it's gone now. Back. Mm -hmm. How do I sound? Ah. Am I okay? You know. <laughs> yeah, you could try. Back to normal. Okay, let's continue with introductions. Who was oh. next, or did I miss Gino's amazing one? Gonna have to deal with. It. <laughs> no, you didn't miss anything. Oh, good. Was, All right. So, so, hey, what's the deal here, Trey? You know, you used to trust me, and then you go on Thank vacation, you. and you didn't even offer. Me to co-host your show. I think I think Dave Veffer <laughs> has something to do with this, doesn't he? No, I think I did. Didn't I offer to no. have you do it one time? No. Yeah, no, no. Did the people at Stocksy tell you to keep me off the air? Is that what happened? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's sort of a Stocksy stuck in customs cabal, and we're all That's blackballing right. you. That's did what you I get figured. turned down? You got turned well, down by Stocksy too, huh? Mm. They actually they actually turned me down four or five times, and I only signed up once. They just kept doing it. You know? <laughs> well, well, I don't feel bad. I got turned down too, so that's cool. You know, and that, that know. good, awesome Google Plus book, I got turned down for that too. So, <laughs> you know, you know what you should do is you should just unsubscribe from their rejection email that you're getting. <laughs> yeah, down no, at the I bottom, it, you can just say unsubscribe, and they'll stop sending it to you every week. Yeah, <laughs> fortunately, I've had a lot of uh, you know. A lot of experience with rejection in high school, so I didn't. I just like rolled with it. I went right to the next, you know, uh, app and you know asked that, yeah. it out for a date. So yeah, you're with Getty <laughs> now, right? No, I'm with Snapsation and proud of it. <laughs> Me and Snapsation are uh, we're seeing each other pretty seriously. I have to say, I think it's going someplace. So <laughs> Snapsation's kind of hot. I got to be honest. All right, Scott, introduce yourself, brother. Coops. All right. Hey everybody, I'm Scott Kublin and just got into photography four to five years ago. I run a website or a blog 
hdrphotographyblog.com where I intend to put more images out there and tips and techniques and kind of show you how I post process stuff. I've had the opportunity to travel with Trey and sit over his shoulder and kind of watch what he does and I kind of now share that with you. So I'm kind of like the Gail of his Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. There's, I thought uh, you were going to say the Gail to his Heisenberg. <laughs> <laughs> There's supposedly something more going on in that relationship, so we should clarify that it's just professional, Scott. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's just platonic, professional. There's, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, does Tom know about this? Yeah. <laughs> There's no, no scissoring going on. Now, Scott, um, you are coming out here in just a few months to join me in New Zealand, yes? Yeah, I, I guess. Um, I think the plans tentatively are the end of October for another workshop that I will hopefully be but helping this is out not, with. This is not announced yet, so nothing is official. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, you will be coming out here unofficially. Officially, yes. Unofficially at some point before the end of the year, yes, hopefully. I mean, as far October as I'm concerned, October is great yes. out of here. It's, uh, it's the spring because it's opposite world, so we'll have, a, we'll have a good time. Yeah, looking forward to it. Much needed, much needed trip. Yes. So, Thomas, uh, yes. what do you think about this new Lightroom Five that just launched today? Uh, I like it. I'm a fan. Uh, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Lightroom. I love Lightroom. I use it to process 95% of my images. Um, <clears throat> you know, the thing I like the most, I think, is that new spot removal tool. Mm -hmm. Have you played around with that? Yeah, yeah you can kind of pick where to where to spot remove from, right? Yeah, yeah. So in the past with Lightroom, you were stuck with, you know, this little circle, and that's all you could use. You had to just, like, if you had a little area that needed to be re fixed, you'd have to kind of patch these little circles together. And now you can just kind of, like, drag right over it and then select from around the area. Right. Yeah. Honestly, that's about the only feature of Lightroom 5 that I'm happy about. I think the others are just really... Boring. I, you know, their fourth bullet point, or maybe even the third bullet point, was that you can now make slideshows and have videos in the middle of your slideshow. Mm -hmm. I mean, how did this get into the top three bullet points of Lightroom Five? But what yeah. an awful thing! I don't want that. Yeah, slideshows. I mean, if if you're going to have an '80s themed parties, you're going to need something like that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, no. A lot of it was pretty. A lot of it is pretty pretty silly, I guess. Um, I mean, so many of the slideshows, organizational capabilities, printing, web uploading. I mean, I don't use it for any of that stuff. I mean, it, to me, it's yeah. a photo processing engine. That's all mm -hmm. it is. What so, do you, what do you think about this, uh, or what is this smart preview thing? Would you ever use that, or would anybody ever use that? What is it? Hmm. Well, the way I understand it, and I may not explain it correctly, which is probably an indication they they didn't explain it very well, but you can turn on these things called smart previews, which instead of just having a thumbnail when you're away from your drive, let's say you're on the road, right. I guess, you can actually have something that looks like a, a full version of your photo, and you can make all these changes and tweaks and do highlights and curves and all that, all that stuff, but it doesn't actually change the real photo until you get home and plug in your drive again, then it mm. makes the changes to the real photo. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what why that's why so great. It's mostly confusing. But why, not, why not just keep the photos that you're editing on your hard drive? Yeah, well, and that's kind of one of the things. And the other thing is like just previews is like 80 gigabytes on my drive because there's like two or three years of photos in my catalog. So I can't even imagine the, the amount of size that smart previews would use. And that, that kind of scares me away from trying to that. That's a good question. I bet smart previews do take up a lot more, but Chris, I think that uh, don't those previews drop away after three months? You choose how long we want them to yeah. stay. Uh, I think the default basically is three lets months you work offline on recent images. Mm -hmm. For a situation like Trey would be with his Drobo, you could take your smart previews for the last few months, work on photos on the plane of those stuff that's usually on your Drobo, come back, plug it in, and all those changes will take effect. But that, that workflow is no good for me because what I do is I usually have several photos right. in my Lightroom that I'm working on at once. Maybe it's a, a bracketed series. And then I might tweak, you know, two or three of them. And then I want to export the full res version 
and bring it into Lightroom or bring it into Photoshop and really work on it. But if I if I don't actually have the real version, if I have some you know low oh, no. res doppelganger, I, I then I can't do anything with it. Yeah, it's actually good for like a Jarvie who does everything in Lightroom. <laughs> mm-hmm. He yeah. does everything in Lightroom. He'll sit there and put like a thousand spot removal things on an image to clone things out instead of bringing something into Photoshop. So for him, that's the kind of thing that he would use mm-hmm. on the road if if he had a laptop and that whole setup going. Yeah, yeah, maybe so. So, are you a hardcore um, Lightroom user, Scott? Lately, I have been. Now, I just downloaded five like an hour ago, so I have really no clue what the difference is. I mean, I played around with it for maybe 20 minutes and did not see any difference whatsoever, but I know going from three to four was quite a big step, and a lot of my images I was able to, to, to tweak just inside of Lightroom without having to go into Photoshop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is is Lightroom going to be one of those Adobe things that they're going to force you to subscribe to, like they are with uh, CS7 or whatever? No. no. I mean, you can subscribe to it. It's part of Creative Cloud, but it's not required. You can still mm-hmm. buy it as a standalone. Uh... Yeah, but I mean, I what I'm wondering is if they're trying to force you to start getting into the cloud. Uh, more and more that way, and store less and less this way. That's why their their features are more geared towards that. Yeah, I mean, I think eventually they want to get paid every month, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they want to well, get paid over and over and over again. Well, that's Gina, an Adobe asking, situation. Gina, are you asking if the uh, if they want you to keep more of your photos in the cloud, or are you talking about their yes. applications in the cloud? Yeah, well, both. It seems like that <laughs> everything that they're doing is more and more kind of geared towards that, so that you know, within a year or two, nobody will even think about storing things on their well, hard drive. And I don't know. It'll be a long time. It'll be longer than two years. Currently, they don't have any solution at all for people that want to put their images on the cloud. Uh, there's just mm-hmm. no good way, especially for professional photographers, to do it. It's just not even a Trey, are you, are you excited about the feature that you can publish directly to Behance? <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? How did that get a top-level <laughs> view on <laughs> Uh, yeah. uh, and just in Lightroom's five defense, there are a few nice tools. I mean, the spot removal is one. I kind of like the upright tool as well, where it corrects your distortion. I know, Trey, that you're not a big fan of it because you really like the distortion. But for some people, when they're doing architectural photography, it can be a useful tool, right? So that, that can be kind of nifty. And it, it automatically levels a horizon. And I think we'll all agree there are enough photographers out there whose photos will improve by having an automatic horizon leveler. So so those are some nice features. The the radial effect tool was kind of nice as well, where you can drag a circle around something and say, well, I I want everything outside of this to be dark, or I want the inside of it to be more saturated. Those are like easy ways of getting some common effects done in Lightroom. So those are nice steps forward, but it's not like the Lightroom 3 to 4 just blew our minds with the highlights and the shadow processing, which was completely <clears throat> different. The, the clarity slider that suddenly did useful, beautiful things. Uh, three to four was a major step, and I feel four to five is more of a, an incremental change. I just love hearing Chris say, say the words three and four. I thought that was amazing. <laughs> three and four. Dude. Three and four. <laughs> is that a new drinking game? <laughs> yeah, if you could just, just count to ten, I'd be happy. <laughs> I just think this new Lightroom is just going to take my Behance to a whole new level. <laughs> just going to take. Absolutely. So, do you think if they just called it Lightroom 4S, everybody would be happy now? <laughs> I just got back from New Orleans and I, I dropped my Behance a few times on Bourbon Street. So, <laughs> not proud of it, but it happened. It is I'm ridiculous clueless. how they're trying to. I guess Adobe bought Behance, which I didn't even know about. Mm-hmm. But it seems yeah. crazy how they're just trying to justify that by putting a top-level menu item saying "File." You know, what is it? Export to Behance. Mm-hmm. Dot dot dot. What a yeah, strange yeah. menu item to have there. And am I the only one that's never heard of this Behance? Well, I'm no. Just, actually, I'm just acting. Not. I'm just acting yeah. like I've heard of it. I have no idea what it is. It's. Uh, it's you know, a social of network, apps. sort of. Like it's it's like a portfolio place for I think it's a lot of designers and different people and the creative types that can put a portfolio up there for people to see. And, yeah. But I just don't find it particularly compelling as opposed to 
anything else. I mean, why why would you put it there instead of Google Plus or Facebook or Flickr or any mm -hmm. number of other places? Yeah. I mean, Behance is pretty cool for the, the UI designers and the UX experts. And whenever I need inspiration for how to do a different kind of user interface and application, Behance is a really fun place to get inspired. But Chris, for you're photographers, Mr. Positive. <laughs> well, I was going to say that for photographers, Behance isn't really the place to be, right? It's much more about UX design. So in that regard, it feels kind of out of place as well in Lightroom. It does. In Illustrator, well, I get it. In Photoshop, sort of. But in Lightroom, it, it, it feels like a mismatch. Well, Gino, in response to your other question about the cloud and the, their business model, I think that uh, Adobe's currently in a really confused state. I think most of the you know photography media, at least, there's so many people that seem to be in the pocket of Adobe. It's ridiculous. Uh, they can do no wrong, it appears, with a lot of people. But... I think it's uh, I think it's wrong what they were doing with the Creative Cloud and Photoshop and these sorts of things, and I called I called them out on it. I don't, uh, you know, I didn't do it to be controversial. I just I just didn't, it doesn't feel right to me. Does it feel like the right business model? And so the next day, there uh, several people from Adobe called me mm -hmm. and tried to talk me through the situation. You know, let me know that where I was wrong or why the Creative Cloud was such a great thing. And so they would go, I'm probably not supposed to be talking about this, but I don't care. So they would go through this long laundry list of all the reasons the cloud is, is great for Photoshop, right? And, you know, to their credit, some of the reasons were really good, like it's easier to do point releases. It's easier to have everyone on the same version. Uh, some of these kinds of things. But then the bullet points got pretty weak after that. Especially, you know, they really have no response to the idea that, well, look, you know, if I want to, if I drop my membership and I want to go in and crop something in six months or just do some light Photoshop tasks, I can't. You know, I actually don't own software like I used to in the good old days, and that, that feels wrong. And then anyway, so they go through all these amazing reasons for the creative cloud to exist, right? And then I say, all right, fine, you know, then we start talking about Lightroom. And Lightroom is not part of the creative cloud. You can just still buy a standalone product and then get the next release and buy that again, then you get to own that. Then I said, well, if all this stuff about the Creative Cloud is so wonderful, you know, if it's really this Valhalla of software development, why don't you also use the exact same business model for Lightroom? And then they never have any response to that because they're like, oh, a well, Lightroom is a different product. You know, it's, it's for casual users. I say, well, that's ridiculous. I think casual users use Lightroom and Photoshop and professional users use Lightroom and Photoshop, but you have two totally different business models for products that seem not that different, especially to newcomers, which is their newest growing market. Hmm. Yeah, that does seem like an odd response. I don't really, I don't really see Lightroom users and, and uh, you know, Photoshop users being that diametrically opposed that you would want two different business models. That doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. Or for that reason, why not charge you forty dollars a month to use Behance? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I just got Behance's new album. I'm a big fan. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Lightroom. It does have that cool new spot healing brush, though. The five. You can like instead of using those little circles, you just like drag around like, the area that you want, and it fixes it. Uh, I always used that before I published to Behance. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's eighty dollars well spent. <laughs> you know, I want to know how are all these cloud creative cloud people supposed to get it if they're using the uh, Photoshop through the BitTorrent? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. So that's Good kind question. of the cloud, isn't it? Different right. cloud, but it's right. still a cloud. The free cloud. Yeah. <laughs> the Somewhat cloudy. <laughs> all right. Did any of you guys see the announcements from? Um, Apple. Um, you know, the iOS stuff is moderately interesting. They totally redid their UI. It's actually The Verge is saying how ugly and strange and confusing it is, I saw. And I can, I can see that side of it. But actually, I was mostly interested in the Mac Pro. Did mm -hmm. anyone see the stats on the Mac Pro? Oh, man, that thing is, yeah. Pretty I was amazed at how small it is. The whole mm -hmm. time they're showing it, you think it's this big thing compared to all of the previous Mac Pros. And then they show it next to the previous Mac Pro, it's the yeah. thing is a little, a little, it, little looks, it looks like this. It looks like, <laughs> it looks like the holder for my Wacom pen. Mm -hmm. Pretty much any 
drives or things you want to add have to be external. They just yeah. want you to do Thunderbolt 2 for everything. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you going to get one, Trey? Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I saw that it can run four different 4K displays. Mm -hmm. Seems awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's Are there hard. any 4K displays? I don't. What What is the What is the top end Apple monitor right now? That's only like 2560 by something. Yeah. Mm. So. Sony what? televisions that are 30 inch wide and 4K. So well, I guess you're supposed to use televisions. I don't know. Asus, yeah, so uh, Asus has a $4,000 4K monitor that goes on sale this month. I thought they would take this big 27 inch job and make it a, a Retina. That should get it close know, to 4K. Right? Yeah. 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 I was looking forward to this. No, I, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna go the other way and say. Uh, Right now, with my most recent version of my MacBook Pro, which is totally portable and goes with me everywhere, uh, that thing can do everything that I need it to do so fast. Mm -hmm. that, uh, I don't know that I need or want anything. And yeah, maybe I can't have four displays with it, but most of the time I'm working on my 27-inch display and I'm really processing photos on one display at a time. Thomas, you run a 15-inch retina? Yeah, the the new 15 inch Retina. It's just with I've got you know 6 gigabytes of RAM in the thing, and you know a 750 gigabyte flash drive, and it just it just flies. You know mm -hmm. I can't imagine I can't imagine why I would want to go just a little faster. I mean right now it can go as fast as I can process. Mine still chugs a little bit. I feel like on these big images. Right, but you're you're using a 800. You're still on the old one. You're not on a Retina, right? No, I don't have the Retina yet. I've got the old Mac Pro. I mean, the old uh, MacBook, MacBook Pro, the 17-inch. The Retina is a lot faster. Yeah, it was a big thing. Yeah, I had the 17-inch MacBook Pro before as well. I had this 15-inch. Uh, it just, it's like, I mean, it just blew my mind. It blew me yeah. away, and I can't imagine. And the nice thing with this is I get the portability. So mm -hmm. I use it as my workhorse when I'm processing images at Home, just hook it up to the 27-inch cinema display, and when I want to have it on the road, I've got it all switching computers. And the Mac Pro to me seems like, what would that give me beyond like a, a, some sort of inf, infinite more speed that I can't use? Well, well, it's kind of like you wearing that Google Glass. Your your cool <laughs> factor, you know, what's that site that tells you how cool you are on the internet? You know, it kind of gives you a number. Am I hot or not? <laughs> not so. Yeah, if you if I would I would uh, hang out with you more, uh, Thomas, if you had that. If I had a Mac Pro. <laughs> yeah, if you did, I would hang out with you more. So that's what well, it would here's get. Here's a compelling you. reason, Thomas. That Mac Pro will have Thunderbolt two, mm. and when you get your new Drobos, your new Promises, or whatever, um, you'll be yeah, able. But have to... you seen how fast the regular Thunderbolt is with a Drobo? I know. I could, it's fast. I could I could copy like a hundred gigabytes in like four minutes. It's like done. So it's yeah. like why why do do I really need it to be done in two minutes instead of four? You know, am I really gonna give up the portability of my laptop for that? I can't believe you're even asking these questions. I don't know who you are right now, Thomas Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just you know, I finally hit with this new MacBook Pro, I finally hit, I think, this level where I mean, I haven't, ever since I've got the thing, except for some weird quirky things, I don't think I've seen that beach ball thing once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah Trey, I, guess Trey, I had the 17-inch just like you did, and, and I've got the 15-inch retina now, and there, there is a very big difference between the and two. Did you have an SSD in your 17-inch? Yeah, I did. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I had the, pretty much the same like specs as yours, and there's, there's a very big everything. difference. Well, mm -hmm. it's possible I'm just still operating under... The, an old mm -hmm. mindset, which is not like me, because I'm always ready to change paradigms very quickly in all other parts of my life. But I, I have my laptop, like when I'm traveling or you know over uh, watching TV or with hanging out or whatever. But then I have my giant, you know, right now I'm on an iMac, a 27 inch with a second 27 inch Thunderbolt, and it's connected to all my Drobos and Promise Pegasus and all this stuff. So I kind of think of this as sort of like my main, you know. 
my main computer system, right? My big, fast computer system. And then my laptop is just sort of like a temporary thing that I move around. But if these Mac Pros are, or these MacBook Pros are really as good as you say, maybe. I mean, the thing they that are. blows me away is that I have a Mac Pro. In fact, I'm talking through my Mac Pro right now. This is my main desk. And the Mac Pro has six cores at 3 gigahertz and 32 gigs of RAM and SSD drives. And, you know, all the stuff that makes editing video and photos quite a pleasure. And the funny thing is that my MacBook Pro is just as fast as the Mac Pro. So that's how fast those new MacBook Pros are. They're, they're workstation fast, which for the first time ever means that your portable computer is in the real world being fast enough for pretty much everything that you can throw at it. And that, that's a first in many ways. So, so I agree that that new Retina Display MacBook Pro makes a huge tricking difference. And plus, Trey, isn't your 17-inch battery about dead? Yeah, it's getting shorter every time. That okay, Trey, here's, here's what you do. Here's what you do. <laughs> Make a time machine backup of the 17-inch. Go get a 15-inch retina display. You, have it, you can take it back within 14 days. Try it for 14 days, a couple weeks. If, it's fat, if it blows your mind and it's totally fast enough, then you don't have to buy a new Mac Pro. Just keep it. Yeah, not a bad idea. Did they announce new um, MacBook Airs today? Yes. MacBook Airs, yeah. Air, I don't yeah. know that the air is going to be powerful enough for you, though. No, no, nobody wants the air. Yeah. The air, the, I, 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 how can you work on it? How, I mean, an 11 or a 13 inch display, that's mm -hmm. like tiny. Yeah, it's too small. Yeah, Wait. the 15 is fine. And, and I know you're used to the 17, and I thought, oh man, when I'm flying and I go from a 17 to a 15, it's going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm losing two inches. <laughs> it, it's not. It, it, it's it's perfectly fine. In fact, the person in front of you, if they put their seat down, they don't pinch your monitor. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I thought I was going to have a hard time with that too, coming from a 17 inch, but I assimilated quickly. Yeah. Uh, are we all saying that it's not the size that matters? Never. <laughs> well, maybe you're saying that, uh, Chris. <laughs> well, it's not that it's 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 a smaller screen and it's a lot thinner. It's not as thick either. Mm-hmm. Well, Blogger Hater agrees with you guys. He says that the Mac Pro is uh, overkill. I'm just checking the chat room. So maybe it is. <laughs> it is. It'll be really fast as hell when you're doing your uh, photomatic stuff, though. It'll be like... Zip. Yeah. Well, I guess I do a lot of video, too, though. I don't know. It's, I'll figure it out. It's faster, too. The, the video is faster, too. Mm. I see. All right. <laughs> well, I want to hear, since Chris Chabot is our resident Euro... <laughs> um, and probably, uh, by that very nature, our resident uh, conspiracy theorist, um, <laughs> anti-U.S. government conspiracy theorist. I'm just putting these ideas in your head, mm -hmm. painting you with a broad <laughs> brush, Chris. Uh, what, what do you think about PRISM? That, that sounds freaking awesome. I mean, dude, <laughs> what a technology. <laughs> I mean, uh, so let me prefix this by saying I'm in America on a visa, right? So, of course, when I have to extend that visa, I have to go talk to the government and say, hey, guys, how are you doing? Uh, and, of course, they're going to tell me, hey, Chris, you had all these wonderful things to say about us. Right. Okay, I'll go on. Don't worry. They're not watching this. Uh, no. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm worried that Diane Feinstein's, like, spying on my Google Plus photos. <laughs> but, but things like PRISM, I mean, haven't we had theories about these vast data networks that governments had that snooped into data in all kinds of places on the web. They, they tapped into glass fiber cables. They're, they're listening to satellites. Uh, the thing that surprises me is that it's new news to many people. Uh, I think they caught me off guard the most. Yeah, I mean, that's if, true. if you're a government and you're worried about foreign states and people inside of America doing naughty things that are bad for you, and you have the capability of listening in into this all this electronic conversation, why wouldn't you? Unless are there's you saying, a law against it, and there's no law against it, so are you, are you saying naughty law. things like like build pipe bombs, or what kind of naughty things are you talking about? Pretty like much everything the American government will care about. Tax evasion, pipe bombs, terrorism, uh, <laughs> drug trades, you name it. I mean, I just never heard anybody with... refer to terrorists as naughty before. No, I think it's a British thing. I'm just worried about those one-on-one -on -one hangouts that Trey and I do where we both take our shirts off and talk. I know. I, know. Right? <laughs> I hope those aren't being recorded by Feinstein. 
because that's <laughs> yeah, that's no good. Um, well, generally, I trust Google more than I trust the government. Mm. You know? The Google is the government, Trey. Don't you listen? Have you left Austin for so long that you you forgot what Alex Jones taught you? <laughs> Google got Jones its seed. Say? Yeah, they, he got see, Google got its seed, seed money from the CIA. They're they're over there in Europe right now at the Bilderberg conference. The head of Google meeting with heads of state, uh, talking about our future dystopian, you know, uh, humanity where they're gonna, you know, transhumanization. And come on, man. I mean, this is important stuff here. Don't laugh well, at it. It's like the Borg, man. The glasses. Assimilated yeah, trade. All I think is everybody taking they over Thomas. <laughs> is they're just trying to get us, you know, used to the idea, so they make movies out of it. You know, all this zombie stuff that's going on. Why do you think they're doing that, man? That's a plan, bro. <laughs> I don't know. Google, like, you know? <laughs> Google and Facebook and all those companies came out oh, and denied it all pretty quick. Hey, listen, you guys keep laughing, but when the stuff really hits the fan, don't come over to my bunker to try to, you know, get some lucre and some, you know, uh, seeds from me to plant your garden because, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be dug in, man. <laughs> my fresh water source. You guys can be sitting over there with your 17-inch nerded out laptops trying to get some sun power, not me. Oh, uh, man, I need some of that Geno energy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's shift gears and go back to the German statist and ask him about this new startup of yours. So it, it's Dutch. I'll just have to point it out. I'm so sorry, but they're right next to each other. Awesome. But anyway, so so the startup that I started recently is Snapsation. As I said, it's connecting people with photographers. That's a short version of it, right? The, the thing that fascinated me is that when you talk to the average normal human being that's not part of the, the initiated, the photographers, then finding photographers is really difficult for them because photographers talk in technical languages. They say, well, I can take a, a 50 mil F1.200 ISO, fine art portraiture of you. And most people who are not photographers go, do you speak English at all? Hello, is this thing on? You know, there's a, a, a major disconnect there. Most of the websites that photographers have don't work well on tablets. and there, There's this disconnect, right? There's no reviews. There's no prices listed. So in many ways, there's so much friction in the market there that people give up on trying to find a photographer when they need one. And on the other hand, we all here have so many friends who are photographers who would love to make a little bit of extra money on the side or even make it a full-time job. I, I talk to those people all the time in my own friend circles. I'm sure you get it as well. So there's this supply on one end, demand on the other end, where people would love to do photography for other people and other people would love to hire a photographer but they're not finding each other. And that's exactly what Snapsation is. It's what a lot of people will call a new sharing economy kind of startup. And the thing that's fascinating about the new sharing economy is that it takes things that previously were not economical, like every photographer trying to market themselves is difficult because getting an ad in a newspaper on a television station is pretty expensive. And, you know, how do you get people to know about you? But the internet where there's millions of people suddenly makes reaching out people reaching out to people over social networks, etc., economical, which means there's a lot of new opportunity there. And that's the principle that Zipcar uses, it's the principle that Airbnb uses and all these other new startups that are connecting people to people. And that's kind of the, the thinking behind Snapsation as well, that if there's all these passionate photographers and prosumers who would love to make money, and those professional photographers are saying, well, hey, our job is changing because there's not so much demand anymore, let's build a great solution for those people to connect them with potential customers. Now, do you, have, uh, you want to share your screen and show us yes, what's going on? Yes, absolutely. So, so yeah. let me show you what you that looks what like and how about. it works. So this is the home screen. Like I said, one of the, the tricky things as a, a regular human being is that you don't understand what's available. You don't speak the language. So Snapsation is all about you open up the screen and you see, well, I'm in San Francisco, so you can see that it shows me stuff that's available in San Francisco, right? You browse through here, you get inspired, and you go, hey, this is a really cool picture of a kid. And Proof that you have cuter friend, kids than your friends. That sounds really awesome. I would love to have those photo lessons. So you can go into this offer. And that's what these things are called. You can explore the images, see what's available. And you read the description. If at some point you need some more evidence that you'd like and trust this person, you can go through to their profile. You can read the review, see what else they have available, and see all the people that like this photographer. Right. So it gives you a sense of who this person is. 
And if some point you go, hey, that's really interesting, you just click on buy offer, you give some details, like, hey, And you place an order. Uh, placing an order basically is the same as starting a conversation with someone. So you end up in this conversation mode where you go. Hey, Chris, when you type it, the Hangout auto mutes you. So we can't hear what you're saying while you're typing. Oh, OK. That's good to know. Thank you for the, the no tip. No problem. So this is much like a conversation. If you know how to use texting on your mobile phone, you pretty much know how to use Snapstation as well. So, so for example, if you if you wanted to use this guy's, you know, how to have cuter kids than your friends, was he easy to like, hook you up with a good looking chick, or what do you do? <laughs> so the thing that he is offering here are photo lessons. Oh, so all right. Different he will internet. Teach you how to take better photos of your kids. All right. And all right. I, I'm sorry, Joe, I am going to cancel this before you mm. charge me for this and teach me how to take better pictures because I don't have any children yet, so I don't think this is going to be useful. So th these are all services. If you want to have beautiful portraits taken, if you want to have photos of your dancing sessions, if you want to have photos of your corporate events, if you want to have better dating profile photos, if you want photos for your Airbnb listing or your Google Maps virtual exploration of your business, newborn babies, all those situations where you need a photographer to show people what exactly you have going on, uh, Snapstation is the place where you can find that. You know what I really like about Snapstation, Chris? Do and, tell uh, me that we haven't gonna... rejected you because we like oh. you a lot. Yeah, that's <laughs> the number one thing I like about Snapstation. <laughs> they haven't rejected me yet, so... Mm -hmm. um, no, but um, is that my for a long time? You know, there's been lots of conversations and shows like this, this show and other uh, of these Google-based shows about how to make you know some money off of your photography, and it mm -hmm. usually has to do with um, you know putting yourself out there on the internet. But for the the truth is that's that's a very hard thing to do. Put yourself on the internet, get found. Yeah. It works for a very small percentage of people. But mm -hmm. what I like about Snapstation is it's taking that, putting you out on the internet but connecting you with what I believe is how you should be trying to start off making money in photography, which is go local. Your yeah. local market is where you should start and where you have the absolute best chance of, of hitting uh, somebody who's going to be interested in your services. It's also where you're the most comfortable. You know your area. You know what your people in your area mm -hmm. are like and, and where they would like to go get pictures taken and things. So yeah. uh, Snapstation combines those two things together in a very meaningful, powerful way, and I, I think it's I think it's going to be big. And the other thing is, uh, I'll stop screen sharing so you can see me again. The other thing that I also learned is, uh, I was talking to Joe, one of the founders of Airbnb, and he was telling me the first year that they tried to put Airbnb in the market, it was a complete failure. There's like two people using it in a few months' time. And the mo when they hit their infection point was when they started charging people online with credit cards instead of making people do it in person. There's something about connecting with someone and saying, hey, I'm going to show you the city, I'm going to cook breakfast for you, I'm going to take care of you, show you a good time, and be a good host. That's all fun and games, but then you go, oh, by the way, can you pay me $100? Then the conversation changes. There, people don't like talking about money and having to do sales and yeah. being and in a, a confrontational you, that, situation. You just described a Saturday night for Thomas Hawk, you know. <laughs> oh, boosting people around town. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, we've had a really good time, but we need to talk about money, Thomas. Oh, sorry, honey. Here you go. <laughs> So, so being able to offer your services online and say, hey, I'm willing to do all these photographic wonderful things for you, and the payments are just taken care of means that you just get to be creative and have fun and take pictures of people and create beautiful stuff. And I think that's something that really makes things easier as well. It's also easier to say, hey, look at this profile that I have on Snapstation with all these offers. It's so much easier to tell your colleagues, look at this pretty thing that I set up, then telling your colleagues, hey, by the way, I can take your profile picture for 50 bucks. So it makes the entire conversation much easier. It gives you tools to market yourself. One of the things that we put a lot of effort into is, hold on, let me screen share. So when you're a photographer and you're in the screen and you go to My Offers, then the first thing you notice is as you're editing your offers and you're growing around here, is there are all these help links everywhere. So what we've done is that we've written this extensive guide that tells you how to get reviews, how to promote yourself on social media, 
<laughs> experimenting with being a customer, how to give great customer service that will keep people coming back to your services, etc., etc. So there's like this huge document that we've written on how to be successful on Snapstation, how to successfully market yourself because let's face it, for a lot of people marketing yourself and talking about yourself is one of the hardest things you could possibly do. We, we know how to take great pictures but how do you write an awesome biography? How do you create a title for your offers? Because let's face it, most photographers would just say, well, I can do macro photography. But of course, regular people have no idea what macro photography is. So, so we want to teach people to say, well, we can create beautiful photographs of your collection instead of saying macro photography. Or we can teach you how to take beautiful photos of your kids instead of saying, we'll teach you how to use a 50 mil lens. So, so those are the kind of things that we try to help people out with. So Scott, have you signed up for this thing? Yeah, I did sign up. And what are you what are you offering on there? I haven't started offering anything yet. I just signed up. I, well, I can tell you, uh, kind of going along with um, what Chris was just saying about the helpful menus. I, when you know, when I first signed up for it, which was yesterday, um, I I thought you know I'll just go set up a profile like LinkedIn or anything else. You know, it'll be real easy. I'll you know ten minutes and I'll I'll be up and going. But when you get into it, it's so in depth and the and the the really super helpful stuff that Chris was just talking about is so good that it made me stop and not try to set it up at two in the morning last night because <laughs> I thought, wow, this is right. All the stuff that they're saying here, this is all great feedback, and I do need to slow down take a little more time and think about how I want to represent myself. And so I haven't set it up either. I, I went in and put a few basic things in, but all the things Chris was just talking about made me stop and say, wow, you know, don't be so quick to just throw some stuff out there. Think about how this is going to come across to the customer. That's so yeah, cool. That, yeah. that was me. That was me too. Plus, you know, I've been shot down by Stocksy and I got shot down by that <laughs> Google Plus book. We're not book. rejecting you, though. Don't that worry. That Google Plus book, I mean, my... Gosh, my ego. I was, I was, I was a little, so I was a little drunk last night. And was on the site, and I think I may have been the high bidder for a thousand dollars for a Trey Ratcliffe boudoir session. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's, that's the that's a boudoir <laughs> session. It's uh, a bit different. Yeah, I was gonna say, if, if, if you put in a thousand, you weren't the high bidder, big fella, because mm -hmm. I put in more than that. <laughs> hey, Chris. One of the good things is, is that how much of the money that, that goes back to the photographer? Why don't you tell people about that? So oh, yeah. There, there are two things that I'm pretty proud of. First of all, we charge a 10% margin uh, on top of what you're asking for yourself, which is a pretty good margin in this market, I think. The other thing that we're offering is what we call the Snapsation Guarantee. And the Snapsation Guarantee means no hassle refunds for the customer, but it also means that you as a photographer will always get paid. So if there are awkward situations, we're going to use part of those funds to make sure that you will always be taken care of. Uh, and we think that will give people a, a lot of confidence in using a service online instead of going through traditional channels. So w we think that we'll add a lot of value. And like well, Gina was saying, 90, this ninety percent payouts are extremely generous. I mean, that's you know, boy, that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the other thing that I think is pretty cool as well that I'm I've started as we launched last Wednesday, so it's only been a few days ago. I just came back from London, but I've started having some conversations with social networks and directories and some of these new sharing economy startups to say, well, you've got all these people signing up for your service, but the main reason why 50% of them drop off is because halfway they say, well, I don't have a great photograph of myself, so. I don't know how to set up my, my own profile. I was actually talking to someone today who owns a service like that, and that's a major problem they have. So I'm going to try to create partnerships with all of these companies where if somebody has these services to offer, if they have directories or stuff for sale or stuff that you can share with each, each other as a community, and you need photographic services to represent yourself and your products, that it's integrated with Snapsation. They can say, well, show me a great portrait photographer in the neighborhood, and here's a couple of options we can use. So step by step, I'm trying to say there are these challenges in how to make money as a photographer, but there's all these people who are really passionate about trying to make money. So I'm, I'm going to try to make it easy to charge money by solving all the payment stuff online. I'm going to make it easy to discover photography by having these beautiful local servers. I'm going to make it easy to market yourself by having this guide available. And then through advertising and various partnership deals, I'm going to try to generate a lot of traffic through that as well. 
So it's, a, it's an ambitious plan, but the goal is definitely to say, well, photography is kind of a big deal in society now. Uh, let's use that to our advantage and make photography a more profitable thing to do as well. Java Porter in the chat room. Yes. I like it. In the chat room, Java Porter says it's an incredible idea for a website, Chris. So great job. Oh, thank you. Yes. The NSA says they like it too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, big brother. <laughs> All right. Hey, so let's. Um, so, by the way, before we jump into Google Plus uh, tips and tricks, uh, Chris, the site is open for everyone now. Anyone can sign That's up, correct. right? If you just go to www.snapsation.com, you can sign in, use it, find local photographers and everything. The Android app is also available. If you go to the Google Play Store, just look for Snapsation. The iOS app is currently in review, so we hope to have that in a week or two. Awesome. Okay. And Chris, does it, does it integrate with Behance yet? <laughs> Not yet, but Adobe is like only a few blocks away from me, so I should have a chat with them. <laughs> All right, uh, Scott, you are ready with your Google Plus tip. I'll go after you, and then we'll line up in the chat room to see who's next. All right. All right. Let me um, get my screen share back on here. Because now I've lost everybody. All right. So screen share. I hope we don't all have the same tip. We should have compared notes <laughs> for the show. Right. That's what it, okay. You see my screen share now? Yes. All right. So one of the problems that I had before was when I would go into communities and I would post a lot of stuff into the uh, HDR photography community is that whenever I would post a photo, I would have to upload it from the computer. I couldn't choose to share one that was from a, a gallery or an album that I'd already created. So now one of the things I can do is, you know, choose your Google Plus photos and then go to one of my albums, find one of my albums, list it, and then uh, publish the photo. Whereas before, it was totally going into my Google Drive, uploading the photo, and then I would have duplicates of these photos. And um, as you can see, um, I say, as you can see, well, I guess you can't see from here, but my photo album right now is so unorganized with photos, you know, just posting one photo per day for the past 30 days. I just have 30 different photos all over the place. So that, that was a welcome addition to me is being able to share a photo from an actual album that I've already uploaded something to. All right. Good tip, Cubby. I have a similar tip, although maybe mine has a tad more context. Let me see here. Uh, it, it will. Mine, mine have some other tips around it. Okay, so this this has to do with um, also adding photos. So let me back up a second here. Go to my albums to show you what's going on here. So I prefer just to have as few albums as possible, all right? So I've got this one album here called uh, Portfolio, The Counter-Earth, and that, has, that already maxed out at 1,000 photos. So you can't add any more than 1,000 to it. So I started an another portfolio. This one's called Portfolio, The Veil Between Worlds, and this one so far has 289 photos in it. Because my, my reasoning is that when someone clicks on a photo in your stream, um, I want them to be able to, you know, uh, arrow through or click through to the next photo, next photo, next photo. And every mm -hmm. now and then, like in my regular stream, I'll just post nonsense photos that aren't really part of my portfolio, just little, you know, whatevers. Uh, but anyway, I do like to have a nice organized uh, portfolio. So um, now when I add photos to the portfolio, um, here's what I do. Not all the time, but this is often what I do. Like I'll go click Add Photos, and then I won't add it from this group. I'm going to go over here to Albums. And what I did recently is while I was in Beijing, um, I took thousands and thousands of photos, but I've already processed about 100 of them that I really like, okay? And I dumped them here into this album, this private album. Here's the tip, okay? It's a private album that I uploaded about 100 photos to, and these are all photos that I plan on sharing with Google Plus over the next um, few days and weeks, all right? 
So rather than go back to my hard drive all the time or go to my iPhoto, and like I already said, I'm always jumping around from computer to computer. I have inconsistent photos on my, on my computers. I'm able to just jump into this directory and go pick a photo that I want to add and share. So let me just go find one that is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll pick this one of these boats, okay? So I just click the little check mark there, and I'll say done. And then what it does is, right now it's copying it from my private album to my public album. All right. It's probably actually already done because it's pretty fast. It's on the Google servers. Then I'll say done. And then Tom, Thomas is our favorite part, our skip tagging button. Yes. <laughs> yes. You, you would think after clicking skip tagging a thousand times that it would know you do not want to tag jack shit. <laughs> right. Okay. Then... Okay, so, so now I'll just say public. All right. I think that's the, I think that's the NSA, by the way, that's asking <laughs> you to tag people. Yeah, it's the Illuminati. Uh, <laughs> boats. Yeah. The thing I've noticed is that if it's the first time you're putting a picture into an album, that your post text automatically becomes the caption text for the photo. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. There used to be a big disconnect there. Like your caption text would be different than your post text. So then it just kind of inserts it there at the, at the end of your album. Mm. And uh, if I check my stream, which I won't check on right now because I have a bunch of uh, private photos that I take of the kids and stuff. Uh, but anyway, it's going to appear there in my stream for everyone to see. Okay, so let me just recap because I'm pretty slow. You you would save it. You would create a uh, album as a private album, and then you could just dump all of your future shares there. And then later, when you want to go add a picture to your actual public stream, you can just pick it out of that album. That's right. That, so that I'm not doing piecemeal. Like I used to like go find it on my hard drive, upload it. And I would rinse and repeat that several times per day. Uh, but now it's very simple because they're already there on Google+. I just go pluck them out of that private directory. That's sort of my two upload. Now, Trey, area. if you do this for a long time, what happens when you forget which ones you've uploaded and shared and which ones you haven't? That's the problem, is that I do forget sometimes. But <laughs> the good news, the good part of that is, is that it's not much of a problem because... Oh, that's a problem. Uh oh I guess... <laughs> Look at that. It's back. It's back already. Muted. Does he, he know muted. he's muted? Okay. Muted. There you go. I knew I was muted. Sorry about that. So to answer that very good question, Thomas, <laughs> yes, I forget all the time. Um, right. But the good news is uh, that, as you well know, not everyone on Google Plus sees every one of your pictures. So mm -hmm. if I do accidentally or purposefully oftentimes repost the same photo a couple days or a couple weeks later, there's very little overlap of who sees the photo. And even if there is some overlap, if people really like the photo, they're like, oh, I remember that photo. It's like when the Grateful Dead replay an old song or something. <laughs> sure. But, but, you know. it, but it doesn't just drive your OCD crazy like it would mine? No, it's okay. I, I think, you know, I really now have a different mindset for an album versus a stream. You know, the album, I do not want multiple of the same photo inside of an album that will mess with my OCD. But a stream to me is just like, you know, it's always coming and going. Um, if I throw the same photo into the stream a few weeks apart or a few months apart, mm. it doesn't bother me at all. I think it's kind of cool, actually. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Play, play Friend of the Devil one more time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's next with it? I lost my whole chat window because I had to reconnect. Who wants to? Uh, I'll share go next. next. Okay. I'll go next. So uh, mine isn't exactly to do with the new Google Plus, but it is something new that I've done with Google Plus. And uh, Trey, I know you have as well. And that is I've turned my comments on my blog over to Google Plus. And this uh -huh. is a pretty 
this is a pretty cool thing. Um, let me just share my screen here. Uh, okay. Start screen share. Okay, so I got this plugin, G plus comments for WordPress, although you can do this on Blogger too. Uh, well, in fact, it's supposed to supposedly easier on Blogger, but I just got this plugin, G comment, G plus comments for, Wood, for WordPress. And then what it does with my blog now is it gives all my comments to Google Plus. And so you get all of these nice, here's a blog post I did on search engines and why aren't they smarter for social image search and all that. And, uh, you know, I've got 28 comments down here. Uh, here's my original comment. Uh, it shows the plus ones on it, all 10 replies. I can kind of see the conversation where I participated. Somebody else has a comment. You can reply to that comment. Somebody else has a comment. And so people are prompted to comment on Google+. Now, if someone really, really hates Google+, or they don't want anything to do with it, they still can't comment the old-fashioned way on WordPress. There's the tab for it. So they've got two comments. Uh, this guy, Mark, doesn't want to use Google+, for mm -hmm. some reason. But here's the real tip. What I find is once I do a blog post, I immediately share that blog post to Google+. And then that creates the first comment, and all of the activity on Google+, now shows up as comments on my blog. So I'm finding I'm getting so much more engagement actually on my blog because I'm effectively pulling in all the G plus commentary that's going on off-site but to the original post. And so it's a simple plug-in. If you have a blog, um, you might want to consider it. Uh, I've never been one to use Discus or even you know, the Facebook comments or anything like that before. Although I think there's a tab for Facebook too down here, but nobody's commented because Facebook's such a lonely <laughs> place. Oh. But good for Google Plus comments, so that's uh, it's not it's kind of a different. Thomas, thing. nobody's listening to you anymore. Scott Kublin's daughter has a fever. You need to just back off a little bit there, pal. <laughs> yes. There's All extreme right. cuteness going on in, in box number four there. Yes, yes. <laughs> Scott Kublin is showing you that his kid is cuter than yours right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got a sick one here that just wasn't feeling well. Mm, there's an app for that. <laughs> yes. Anyways. <laughs> oh, no. Puppies and kids. Way to crash it. <laughs> That's all right. We hope you yeah. feel better. Uh, which one is that, Scott? Aw. That's, uh, that's Riley, my little one. All right. The baby. Living the, baby living the life, Riley. Girls. Yeah. Um, good tip, Thomas. You know, I, I, uh, I think, so this Google Plus comment plugin, it's quite unofficial right now. These are just sort of hacks from what I understand. It really works if you have a blogger blog. It's not meant to work with WordPress, but I do think that in the next few months they will open up Google Plus comments all over the web, you know, just so, not just for WordPress, but for all these blogs and all these things out there. Um, I think they're trying to do it the right way, though. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It might break our instantiation in the meantime, but until then, who's next? Well, I was I had this incredible tip on how to like make a private uh, album and then share things individually later, but you kind of stole that from me, which is kind of a bummer. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't have anything now. I'm all out. You suck, Gino. You know. <laughs> yeah, every everything that the audience, all the bad thoughts that they had about you, are now coming true. Uh, they were they were true all along. It's just you're finding out. So. You know, Gino, you know who you are. I figured out our our um, foils in the real world, uh, but this only makes sense if you watch Burn Notice. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but I figured out you watch it, don't you, Dave? Same app. You know where so I'm going. Gonna say. So who who would uh, Gino be to me? Sam X, probably. Yeah, Gino is my Sam X. That's right. <laughs> Sam X, burn notice? Sam, no, X. Sam X. So this is my uh, TV show suggestion. Not that I toss a lot of these out, but there's a great show called Burn Notice. Uh, it's about a spy who, who loses his spying uh, license or whatever. And uh, so anyway, he has to do all this stuff on, on the down low, and he's got this right-hand man that's ex-CIA. He's also a spy named Sam X. Anyway, Sam X is Gino Barassa. 
If you're a fan of the show, yeah. then you know what I mean. I'm gonna I'm gonna go check it out on Netflix, and I I'll let you know how happy or disgusted I am with you. No, and you'll that, love it. So. It's I think it's now on season six, so you can you can have those marathons where you watch all season one and season two. It's a it's a good show. You'll like it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I don't all watch right, much. But it's saying a lot that I actually watch this show. Yeah, you should watch Mad Men. I love Mad Men. Yeah, I haven't watched that one yet. I've got a big list. Okay, people don't want to hear us talk about TV shows. <laughs> Who's next? Yeah, let's talk. The, Google Plus so, so uh, tip. Tip that I have. Hold on. I hit my screen share here. Now this is going to be more relevant for us photography kind of folks, right? But uh, but I figured there's definitely some photographers too. Now. There's this new auto awesome and auto enhance, which when you're using a cell phone or if you're not using Lightroom or Photoshop, those are really amazing tools. But if you're like Trey or Scott or myself and you do a fair amount of editing in Lightroom and these other applications. You don't really want Auto Enhance to change the way that you've edited your photos. So you can turn that off, and I don't know if everybody knows about that. So I went to Settings. You go all the way down here, and you see these check boxes for Auto Enhance and Auto Awesome. So you can actually turn those on and off. Uh, I've got them turned off because I do all of my processing in Lightroom and Photoshop. So, so that's my tip, that if you do do a lot of editing in your images, you might want to turn those off. And otherwise, you should leave them on, because they are pretty awesome. So it's, it's a short tip, but it could be useful. Aha, good one. Good one, Chris. Um, Gino, have you come up with anything worthwhile? <laughs> yet? Well, yeah, here's, here, I actually do have a, a pretty good one here, is if you are not awesome, leave that on. So, a lot of the people pro that I see tip. posting, yeah, yeah, it's a pro tip. Oh, wait, I see a lot of people out there, and I'm saying, now. I'm saying, no, leave awesome on. <laughs> yeah. I see a lot of people turning the awesome off, and I'm like, big mistake for you personally. Me, I understand why you turn it off, but you know, for the rest of you. I oh, hate this, Chris. Scott. I got two of them here. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Good Lord, did you just go hire some street urchins? I know those can't be your kids. <laughs> oh, these are mine. They're lovely. They're, they take after your wife, obviously. They're far too attractive. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, this is getting a Dickensian in here. I need uh, some chimney sweeps in here. Maybe a, a, <laughs> wouldn't that be great if a, if a child just crawled out of my chimney, Gina? <laughs> that would be yeah. awesome. Hey, uh, by the way, Thomas, I'll give either one of your kids $20 if they can uh, describe what Dickensian is right now without you whispering at <laughs> you. I don't think they know. <laughs> hey, no. I'll give me 20 bucks if I can tell you what Dickensian is. <laughs> Gino. All right. Are we out of tips? What's going on? Yes, we're out of tips. Dave, did you launch a tip? You're the big Google Plus master. You should have... 20 tips. Just a tip. No, I don't have any tips. <laughs> no tips. I didn't, right. I didn't think of one, and I'm not firing on my brain today. It's all right. It's, it's not your job as number one producer to come up with these <laughs> tips. Like other guests yeah, that's not, that's not your situation. No, it's <laughs> not, not your situation. All right. Uh, let's share photos. Who wants to share first? <laughs> Show and tell time. Oh, I, I don't mind. I always like to go laugh. I'll share first because I'm probably going to cut out a little bit early since my daughter's not feeling well. All right. Go for it. okay. Share like the wind, young one. Speaking of. <laughs> oh, gosh, I hope I haven't shared these yet. Here's an awesome looking tray in his medieval jacket walking along the streets of Queenstown. I think you need to screen share first. Yeah, we're seeing you looking bored. Hey, Chris, there's a bit. <laughs> Have I cleared this photo, by the way, uh, Scott? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to clear all photos of me. Okay. Is that one okay to clear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. Yeah, it's so it's, uh, you can imagine walking around the streets of Queenstown. It's a very comfortable feeling to be walking with Trey. Good Lord, what kind of coat is that? You should have like a shield and a helmet on right there. <laughs> it's sort of an Austrian fusilier's coat, Gino. 
That's what I was thinking. It's like a that word you used, coat. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Should be dragging a blonde-haired girl off with, like, you know, the head of your fallen victim instead of a camera. Well, that was content of where Phil took care of that. Right. <laughs> um, another New Zealand shot. I don't think I've shared this one. Um, it's just, it, it's kind of cool because these mountains almost look like you're seeing double vision with the mountains in here, but it's, um, you're not seeing double. But just look at the, the color of the water and the greenery. It was just an incredible sight. This is in New Zealand. Lake wow. Wanakakatiku Wana or something, Wakatipu. I thought that's right? the lake it was. Yeah. <laughs> it looked familiar, huh? Yeah, Lake Wakatipu. Yeah. Are you sure it's um, not in Hawaii? Nope. Uh, same lake, maybe 20 minutes later as a storm was rolling in. The sun shining Ooh. down through. Cool. Yeah. That's straight out of camera, too. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely no retouching with that one whatsoever. Sorry. Yeah, I know you. You roll tight yeah. like that. No, that was with the Kodak disc. <laughs> now we're all distracted by uh, Thomas's daughter wearing his glass. <laughs> <laughs> she looks cute. <laughs> Kids look so cute in glass, don't they, Thomas? And dogs, too. Yeah. <laughs> Aw. Keep going, I, took a, I took a picture of my dog in Google Glass, and I think it got more plus ones than the one of Sergey Brin. <laughs> well, I don't know if you're seeing his daughters in Google Glass or if you're seeing my screen. We're seeing your screen now. I yeah. switched okay. over my screen. This was just us. Uh, I forget. We were on the way to, uh, what was it, Glenarchy? Yes, maybe? Glenarchy. And we, yes. uh, we, just, we stopped out and just took some poses and... Um, the guy in the middle is Curtis. He's the one that does all the work for Trey. You can see how hard he was working. <laughs> oh. uh, so there's Trey's shot again. And then this is, you know, this is pretty impressive. This is a fire dancer outside of um, Trey's house. Cool. And, um, I mean, that's just a single shot. That's not an HDR. It's just a single shot that I used Lightroom and um, Photoshop to enhance. Um, <coughs> I'm quite impressed with that, you know, considering the light, even when you zoom in, I mean, it's, 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 it's I think it's a pretty neat shot. I impressed myself with that. And there's, uh, this is the shot that I call the Shea Trey Milky Way. <laughs> <laughs> this is Trey's little cottage off of his house, his main house, which is where uh, I stayed. And uh, there's two bedrooms, Karen Hutton stayed in the other one. And I stepped out one night and just uh, took a picture of, of the skyline, and you can clearly see the Milky Way just shooting down. Just a absolutely incredible uh, experience, um, incredible uh, moment to capture there. Um, and then this was yeah, Karen in the window. Karen in the window. No, I don't think she was in the window there. That's but not her mashing herself up against the window. <laughs> no, but you do need to do something about your door because you got a lot of cracks in their doors you hear. Your insulation is very, very, very off. Yeah, and, that's why it gets so cold in here. <laughs> and then uh, this was a sunrise on the, another, was it Lake Wakatipu? Yep. Just outside of Queenstown. This was just a cool uh, sunrise that us and a bunch of the other photographers uh, were able to capture that morning. Um, and that's it. Up for you. All right. Beautiful Thank stuff. You, Scott Cublin. Thank you very much. Chris, do you want to go next? Who wants to go next? Sure. I can show you some of my recent stuff. So, of course, I've been busy with this startup. So, what I'm going to show you is some of the pictures I did for the scavenger hunt recently. Now, if you don't know the scavenger hunt by Krista Ray, you should definitely add her to your circles and find out. Scavenger Hunt is about the most fun you can have on Google+. It's 500 people shooting 10 concepts of words, and then these professional judges see like which images they like the best at the end of the month. And it's this big, beautiful competition where everybody learns with each other. So I figured the thing that I want to get better at is photographing people and using like big lights and all that kind of jazz and processing that in Photoshop. So I use the scavenger hunt as a good excuse to get better in portraiture. So this was one of the portraits that I took there, which 
I actually took during the daylight in the forest, but thanks to Photoshop, it looks like it was taken in the dark. So th that was a lot of fun to do. This one went crazy with baby powder. So there's two big lights on the sides, and there's this girl jumping up and spinning around with this baby powder launching off of her. And I, I thought it was kind of a cool effect. To, uh, and this one. It was actually one of my more misunderstood photos. I missed the mark there a little bit. The concept was landscape. And I, I figured it would be much more fun to shoot a picture of someone looking at a landscape photo. But it wasn't obvious enough that it was a landscape. I do like the processing of it, though. It came out like this this 60s kind of vibe. So the front yeah. door definitely helps with that as well. It's a it's lot very cool. of shopping there for... Uh, yeah, so we found a 60s dress in the thrift store. and That's the view from my living room that you see behind me as well through the webcam. Then the final image, this is the one that I'm the most proud of. I actually got a book from Trey's website. Where he's got one of those ebook stores, and there's this, this course on how to do this kind of work in Photoshop. So I, I got that book for a few dollars. It was an awesome experience. And rehearsed this a couple times before I finally understood how to do this. And this is merging like a paint texture with a human face and then using a puppet warp tool to bend it so it looks all 3D correct. And the, using blend modes and layers that I've never touched or seen before. The, it took me a couple of hours to pull this one up, but it was a, a, a fun experiment. I definitely learned a lot about Photoshop building this. You can just so, go down to 6th Street and find girls with bad facial acne like that. You don't even have to Photoshop it here. Oh, that, that might be easy. I'll, I'll use the yeah. suggestion next time. That's a pro tip. Pro tip. Yeah, okay, right. cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no charge. Hey, uh, Chris, I'm going to use that as an opportunity to plug that, that author and flat. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, Do. Because that was an awesome book. Yeah, I'm glad you got that. So, actually, a lot of people might not know this. We just launched a new version of Flatbooks. This is sort of a Flatbooks 2.0. Uh, we completely redid the website. We completely redid the e-commerce experience. Because actually one of our biggest problems, well, we have a full-time support team, actually. And one of the big problems is people are always losing their e-books. So they're always having to re-download them. It was a big you know, manual support problem. So now you sort of have a login and um, uh, whatever you buy, it's always there. So you can just download it any time. You know, it's really the proper way to do e-books. We were kind of uh, hacking it together before. I apologize for that. But anyway, uh, we've corrected all those mistakes, and now it's done quite properly. So uh, that book, uh, do you remember the name of that book? Um, no, not Chris? exactly anymore. Um, let me see. I, th I know the cover, if I can actually see the cover. Um, do you remember the author's name? Was it Tanya I'm not be useful. Was it Tanya's uh, book? No, it's not Tanya's book. Um, the Creation of the Succubus. That's the name creation of the book. Creation of the Succubus. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we can find it. Who wrote that? It doesn't say. I must say there's somewhere. We have so many books, I can't keep them all straight. Oh, it's a video tutorial. Oh, ah, yes, it is. Video mm -hmm. It's on there. All right. Well, we'll be sure to link to it properly. I apologize. I should I should know who did that one because that's our only video tutorial. You know, Curtis and I put the link in the Luke. chat, Trey. If you want to click it, oh, cool. Oh, you put the link in the chat. Okay, good. You guys can see my screen. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. Yes, the creation of the succubus. Yeah. There we go. Very good. And we'll link to that in the show notes too. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. We're glad you like that. Uh, that was, uh, like I said, that taught me things in Photoshop that I never imagined were possible. So highly recommend it. There's a lot of fun works there, a lot of fun books. Cool. Excellent. Um, all right, who's next? I guess I'll go. Okay, Gina. Um, let's see. I can figure out how to do this. There you go. Can you see that? No, Am I screen sharing? We see, no, you you see you. me. Uh, I hate it when I do that. I see Sam uh, X. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. How about now? Now we see the hangout. Yes. Now we see, the now we see you. Oh, okay. Because yeah, can we, you see these guys? We can. All right. So I just got back Saturday night from uh, White Trash Disneyland, or uh, as most people refer to it, New Orleans. And um, so we went down, stayed in the French Quarter, and 
I've never been there before. Never been to Bourbon Street. Have you guys been to Bourbon Street? Oh yeah. Yep. It it is uh, the smell of urine is overpowering. So, <laughs> well, I I like that place there. Big ass beers to go. Yeah, that that was there. At one point, my wife was like, "Oh my god, do you smell? It smells like urine." I said, "No, honey. There's a guy urinating right behind you right now." <laughs> so. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. But uh, at first, you know, when I was there, I was I was kind of down. I was thinking, man, these people in New Orleans are kind of trashy. But then I realized it's not the people in New Orleans; it's the rest of America. They all show up to get trashed on Bourbon Street. So I apologize to the people in New Orleans because I got up the next morning, about six o'clock in the morning, and went out and saw the city when all of when the Sandman had swept away all the white trash, and it was just the normals. And it's amazing. The French Quarter was just beautiful and gorgeous and I had a great time uh, you just got to stay off Bourbon Street it's terrible but anyway so uh, there was lots of these kind of little ragtime bands playing and see this guy here on the left he's got a saw and uh, there was like three or four of these little bands all playing saw so for you parents out there whose kids are trying to get you to buy them a guitar just go down to Ace Hardware and get a saw that's all the <laughs> all the cool kids are playing saw now it, guitars yesterday you know <laughs> so, so here's a green door. I mostly uh, st I did a grid pattern search while I was in the French Quarter. I started at, at the the lower, you know, like around Canal Street, and I just started going up and down, up and down, all the way, just looking for these cool old doors and and archways and all the little wrought iron fence pieces and stuff. And they're just so cool. And uh, you get them. My tip, my pro tip, uh, is if you're going to go shoot the French Quarter, do it in the morning. Because the later it gets in the day, that's when all of the dregs of America start rolling out and, uh, you know, and ruin it for you. So, but if you go out from like 6 o'clock to 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it's empty and it's just beautiful and waiting for you. There's lots of these courtyards. Um, I didn't know this, but in the French Quarter, basically everything is, is, is a square. All the houses are squares with a courtyard in the middle. And they all, lots of them have these big wrought iron peepholes of the, of the size of your head. And you can actually see in to the courtyard. And so I took a real close up of, of, of one of these wrought iron uh, peepholes. And um, funny story on this one is this couple walked up while I was shooting this one because I had my 14 to 24 millimeter. And they were filming a movie there. Hot Tub Time Machine 2 was filming in the French Quarter while I was there. Mm -hmm. that, that guy from... Uh, yeah, I, I'd never heard of Hot Tub time machine but apparently there's enough dorks that watched the first one that they're making another one but um that, that big guy daryl from that played daryl in the office i love that uh, guy he's good yeah he he was there i got pictures of him and that there was kind of like a little nerdy guy in the office that came on in the last couple of seasons wore glad a weird in the movie but anyway uh so everybody thought because i had a big tripod and a big lens that i was with the camera crew and they kept stopping me and going oh what are y'all are you about to film something and so this couple, while I was shooting this peephole, and I was looking in the, into the courtyard, they stopped and they were asking me, what was I doing? And I told them, oh, I'm just shooting this. And I was kind of annoyed, you know, I was just hoping they would just go away. And it was their house. They were waiting for me to get out of the way so they could go inside. Nice. So yeah, that was, yeah, that was a little embarrassing. But um, so it was just lots and lots of shots like this all over. Those clouds were just amazing while we were there. So there's lots of cool clouds and I, I haven't seen a payphone in Austin. I don't think we have payphones anymore. So I was kind of surprised to see payphones. And you can see people would leave you. It's such a friendly city. They would actually leave you Pabst Blue Ribbon beer uh, while you were making phone calls. Um, so I was I was very happy with New Orleans, and uh, so that's that's my share. Nice. All right. Plenty more over the next two weeks to come. I took thousands of pictures. Good stuff. Good stuff, Gino. Thomas, you're the man. All right. Uh, let's go to screen share. All right. Um, so these are just sort of five photos that I've recently been working on and done. This is the Broadway Tunnel in San Francisco. Um, it's mostly for cars, but there's a little pedestrian way, and so I took my 14 millimeter in there and played around. There was a school bus coming with this bright yellow tile and so I thought that was fun so I did that. Uh, that same day I was walking up through Chinatown before and I saw this doll and I love sort of creepy plastic sort of dolls, doll heads, stuff like that. Oh I bet you do. 
So I took a picture of that. I have, have a couple thousand. And then, yeah, I threw this one in here after the fact only because we're talking about how uh, cute kids glass. So there we go. <laughs> That's Bucky. Uh, he, he uses Google Glass in a lot of different ways. Sometimes he'll use it to find dog food. Uh, he'll track squirrels with it. <laughs> he, it'll, it'll show him the route to where he buried his bone. Google, uh, how do I catch my tail? Yeah. Uh, this last weekend, I went down to... I just got back from this weekend. Uh, I went down to uh, Laguna Niguel. And while I was down there, I visited the uh, San Juan Capistrano Mission. A really cool mission in California. And they had these succulents, which I thought looked really interesting. I always like taking pictures of cactuses and things like that. So this is a shot that I took uh, a couple days ago of this cactus at the mission. The photo of the mission itself at night, which they had a green light up on this tree, which I thought was interesting. And I like the shadows in the old mission. I think this, this was the largest mission I had ever seen. It's pretty massive down there. What kind of position were you taking there? Uh, what do you mean position? Never mind. Keep going. Yeah, was I mean was I laying, laying down on the ground drunk? Yeah. Um, oh, a lame missionary position reference. Oh, missionary, I got you, got you, got you. I'm a little slow so. So, anyways, uh, there's some photos and played around with. Very right. cool. Uh, nice of you to notice the contextual situation of his immediate yes. family territorial. Oh. Well, he was screen sharing. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will. Uh, I will share some photos. Uh, let me find out what's going on here. Okay, oops, can't show that. <laughs> oh, I need to share my other screen. Sorry, it's quite confusing here. There's too many windows open. I think that's why I need all my monitors. There's too much happening. Okay, screen share. Okay, so I'll share uh, ten photos from. Uh, from China last week. Uh, this is uh, this was shot from atop one of the towers. Actually, this is very misleading photo because you know China, China and, and uh, Beijing are incredibly smoggy. It's really bad. But um, you know, I think people see this and they think the nuclear power plant contributes to the smog, but it actually doesn't. It's, the, it's all the coal and nonsense. This is just water vapor, steam that goes up. They need. To, if it was more nuclear, it wouldn't be so so smoggy there. But this does kind of make a nice pollution-like uh, photo, I suppose. Nothing uh, makes yeah. a neighborhood feel safer than nuclear reactors on the periphery. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is the Lama Temple, and man, I wish I had the stats on this. Maybe someone in the in the um, chat room can look this up. But there's something quite amazing about this. Is that, this uh, this is uh, this Lama statue, this Buddha statue, is huge. It's about three stories tall. It's all made from a single piece, I think, of sandalwood. And the thing about it is that um, I think most of this piece of wood is actually buried underground, or at least a huge, significant piece of it is buried underground, just so that it can stay upright. It was all carved from a single huge tree. I mean, God knows how they got it there. Got it in place. And, built this whole thing around it, but it's really impressive when you realize what went into building this this thing. Um, but And all these were taken with the Sony NEX7, by the way. I, I'm working on this big report. You know, I didn't use my D800 at all. These are all shots from the uh, NEX7. In fact, all 100 plus shots that I'll be publishing are from uh, the NEX7. I like the, I like the compression on the shot. What lens were you using? Thank you. This is, um, man, I don't remember the exact lens, um, but it's something like a 30 to 210 huh. uh, with a 1.5 crop factor. So it comes out to, what is that, uh, 315, um, something like that. It goes all the way up to 315. I'm pretty much zoomed in all the way, so this must be around 300 millimeter. 300, 315, whatever it takes. Yeah. Uh, this one actually is not NEX7. This was taken with Google Glass. This is one of the uh, student llamas inside of the temple before. Yeah, you had to use the glass because it was kind of a covert shot, huh? A little bit covert. I did the wink there, the wink trick. Yeah, 
Nice. Uh, this is uh, a bunch of construction workers walking through the streets mm -hmm. uh, of Beijing on their way to lunch. That's cool. Um, thank you. Uh, this is uh, the entrance to Beihai Park. There's a temple on the other side of that bridge, and so that's sort of the entrance. Uh, these, this is actually the photo I just shared. These are some lakes there, at the, or there's some uh, boats there at the park on the lake. This is an old street. This is one of the old, I guess, refurbished streetcars that used to head up and down Tianmen, which is Chinese nice. for front gate. It's kind of got a surfer vibe to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got kind of a cool, uh, it's cool the feeling at this place. Um, by the way, um, I don't know if you know this, Thomas. I know you're a big fan of Trey's Lightroom presets, but we just released brand new presets for Lightroom 5. Oh, I perfect. Think. I can't you wait. You didn't even know that because it's not even announced yet. I guess I'm announcing it right now. Wow, what a launch. Um, man. Launched live on the Trey Radcliffe show. Yeah, you got you to gotta get them. They're really good. Um, I this love is one it. of those presets too. That is Tom Anderson. In a very <laughs> strange photo. This is one of the strangest photos I've ever taken of Tom. Um, he's sitting in this royal chair. Uh, we tried to get her to sit beside him, but it was not allowed. She's not allowed <laughs> to sit in the royal chair uh, because she is a woman, and only a man can sit in that chair. And he was the this, nearest. This man. looks kind of good on him, though, doesn't it? Yeah, this totally works for him. Yeah. No, he, he looks like any second right he's gonna he's gonna start setting the table on fire with one of those big chopping knives and do like some <laughs> Benihana stuff or something. Did he have that chair wrapped up and sent home? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he might he might pull out one of those Job illusion type situations from Rest of Development. Ah, All right, there's uh there's Tom and a Asian girl. Okay, here is the last photo I'll share. This is, uh, this is close to where that streetcar was, but this is much later at night. And one of the things that's most awesome there, I think, is uh, everything looks totally different at night. It's a little bit like Burning Man. And some of these uh, temples, they've taken great care with their lighting, and, and uh, man, it just looks awesome at night. It's like an alternate reality there. So if you go to Beijing, I, this is actually my, first, my, it's my, like my fifth or sixth time to Beijing, but it's my first time to this area. It's called uh, Front Street or Tiananmen, and uh, I would check it out for sure. Mm. That's okay. kind of like the French Quarter was the same too. At, at nighttime when you'd walk around the French Quarter, you'd sort of... even recognize them so that seems a little buggy Dave whenever I unscreen share it seems to crash hmm. quite hmm. buggy hey Trey so that picture you took with you did that with Winky yeah I did it with Winky actually um, I'm working with that developer I have a, a new version of it uh, that we're calling uh, Trey Burst <laughs> and it, it takes, when you wink into it, it actually takes like five, six, or seven photos in quick succession. Because the problem, as you know with this thing, uh, Thomas, is that when you take a picture, you don't actually see what you're taking a picture of until it's already right. been taken. So right. you actually have to take several photos to get the composition right. And I notice that I take a bunch of series of photos, and the last photo is always the best because it's the one that's correctly composed. So, right. Yeah. So are you using it now? Is that, has he already made it? Yes, I'm using it now. It's in testing. It's, I, none of this stuff is official, of course. Right. And actually, I don't even think it's a hack or I don't think it's wrong. You just kind of sideload these apps. There's nothing illegal. Yeah, although my Winky stopped working for some reason. You have to, sometimes you have to recalibrate. <laughs> Um, and I don't know if you guys know how you sound right now, but my uh, he stopped working. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I don't know if you've got a urinary tract infection or if you've got Google Glass issues. What are you talking about right now? Right, right, right. But I, I don't even know. I don't even know how to get back to calibrate it. I can't find it anywhere on my glass. No, no, I you can't find. It. You need to. You need to hook back into it, right? You need to go into Borg Locutus mode yeah. and uh, have it plugged into your computer while it's on your head. And then yeah. you need to go into debug mode and then go into your terminal and type that command I yeah, sent you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you can get into the calibration mode once again. Yeah. All right. I'll have to get back on that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
All right, we should do Google Plus Discoveries. Uh, and then I got to head out. I have something uh, very exciting and something secret I can't talk about, Papa, but I'll be able to talk about it over the next few days. I have to drive away from Queenstown tonight, I think. So, who wants with to start Gordon first Lane? with there? What? With Gordon Lane? I wish <laughs> Gordon was here. That would be good. I wish he was here. Well, I don't. I don't have a, a Google Plus discovery, but uh, while I was in the the French quarters, I did discover uh, Brad and Angelina Jolie's place. So I thought that was kind of cool. But uh, you know, it's a little discovery there. I thought it was kind of awkward, you know, Angelina Jolie being in in the French Quarter because I mean, like, what happens at Mardi Gras? They throw her beads now. I mean, you know, it's just kind of awkward. So. Oh, Gina. Too, too soon, Thomas. All right. <clears throat> okay, who who's next? I didn't even get it, so I'll I'm share a discovery. Not offended. Okay, go. Uh, I'm going to share my discovery is Jeremy Brooks. Uh, let's see, screen share. Hold on, screen share. Start screen share. Here it is. You guys can see that. Um, Jeremy is he's a local San Francisco photographer. He's a friend of mine as well. Um, he does a lot of stuff like street photography stuff like on BART. Here's one, this guy in the Mountain Dew shirt that looks pretty cool. Um, he's doing a series of photos and trying to make a book on Kickstarter. Of photo. He takes a photo of the Transamerica building every single day from his office. So here's one. You can see different versions of that. Um, check out his Kickstarter if you think that book sounds interesting. He just does a lot of just street stuff around San Francisco, similar to uh, you know some of the stuff that I do. But, you know, lots of pictures of this Transamerica building, street photography, uh, you know, stuff like that. and uh, Just cool stuff, some abstract stuff. Oops. Uh, no, I lost it. Anyways, Jeremy Brooks is a, a great guy, good photographer. He posts a lot. He's uh, online a lot. And uh, check him out. Very cool. Um, who's next? So I've got someone to share, and it's Derek Kind, and he's he's one of those guys. He's a pretty young photographer, and he got into photography a little while ago. But you notice how sometimes artists that they have this inflection point where they they go from being pretty good to being amazing, and, and this is one of those people who hit that point where you really start to go like, wow, this guy's seriously producing some beautiful stuff now. So these are just random images from his photos from his post. But I'm really impressed by them. I think these are beautiful. This is just super creative. The things he's creating is just gorgeous. I mean, I wish I took this shot. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? So he's got this, this stream filled with these beautiful creations that make you go, why isn't everyone following him yet? Because that's mind-blowingly beautiful. Whoa. So, so that's my discovery. Good Derek one. Kind. Adam, beautiful Good. stuff. Is it up to me now? Am I last to go? Yes. Because Gino had a very lame, confusing discovery. Okay. <laughs> Find mine. And this guy. This guy is new to me. I just, just found him myself, so I'm sharing him immediately with you guys. His name is Hirolamo Cracciolo. I'm sure I said that wrong. But man, look at this stuff. Look at that. Beautiful. Um, he has big watermarks, which he loses points with Thomas and I in that. <laughs> yeah, Thomas is going to block him now. Look at that. It, wouldn't this be, it's a beautiful photo, but did he have to do the watermark on the dock? Mm -hmm. oh. I, um, <laughs> I know. But otherwise, I mean, the photos are really interesting. Um, quite creative. Wow. Uh, really cool. I haven't. Uh, you know the, the reflection. What photo are you talking about? All I can see is a watermark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this is a good guy to follow. Uh, maybe we can. Uh, maybe we can. Thomas, we could peer pressure him to not use water. We've, you know, actually, our campaign against watermarks has been quite successful because I'm sure we never talk about this, but I'm sure you get lots of emails like I do. People, we've actually talked lots of people out of using watermarks on their photos. Nice. Yeah, I get a lot of emails like that, and then I get the other ones where people just hate my guts for daring to say something bad about it. Yeah, well, <laughs> let's not talk about it. We, I get those too, but yeah. don't think about those. Let's be positive. <laughs> let's think about the positive right. impact we've had on the world, not the haters. That's right. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, we're forces of good, Thomas. We want right. people to remove watermarks so we can see their photos and their beauty. As they're meant to be seen. Enjoy As them for beautiful things that they are. Yes. All right, Gino, let's wrap it up. Do you have any final parting words for us? Well, not really. Um, <laughs> I did discover that the 14 to 24 millimeter lens, the Nikon, is kind of a ripoff. Uh, I know you, you own it too, but what I realized is, have you ever not had it in 14? I mean, have you ever been walking around and thought, you know what, 15 millimeter is what I need for this shot. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna zoom it in. You know, maybe 17 millimeters good for this shot. It's always on 14. How much extra money did I waste getting the to 24 part when I've never <laughs> used it? I should have just got a 14 millimeter lens and saved the time. <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually I did use them a lot. You might keep using it. You might change your mind. But you know, since I've switched to this Sony, uh, by the way, Sony still does not pay me. Just to give me any <laughs> anything, no sponsorships or anything like that. But uh, since I switched to Sony, I've been using this 10 to 18 a ton, which is 15 to 27, and it's uh, it's been great. And it's about one tenth the weight of that 14.4. You know? Oh yeah. That thing is is a beast to carry around. When you got a D eight hundred with the fourteen and twenty four on, it's literally what, like five pounds. Yeah, it's a major commitment to your arm. Yeah. So, so when are we going to see the full report? Because we're all getting curious now. Yes, I'm working on it. I've got a good list of all of the advantages and the shortcomings, and you know, it's not a it's not a slam dunk. Uh, NEX seven is the winner, but uh, it's definitely trending in that direction for sure. Yeah. Soon, soon I hope, soon I hope. And actually, I should also let you know, there's nothing official yet, but Sony did contact us. They're, they're super interested too. So they're talking with Curtis and the whole team. Maybe something mm -hmm. will be official there down the road, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, I'm only gonna use the best, no matter what. The they might have like a, a trade Ratcliffe steampunk inspired NEX 9 coming out. Mm -hmm. Maybe. We, that's <laughs> I would so to. get that, that would be so awesome. You know, I mean, it should come. It should come with like a little wooden dongle that you can just twist around in your hand when you're in Hangouts. <laughs> you know. That would be awesome. The wooden um, dongle. Yes. Come, with, come with one of those jackets that Scott Kublin took a picture of. Mm. Uh, those long yeah. Jacket. yeah. Yeah. If, if you buy the limited edition version, it comes with the jacket and the dongle. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right, you guys. Well, thanks for coming along. Good to see you. Cool, All thanks right. for having us. Good to see you. Catch All right, you this isn't really a show. It's just a hangout with friends, so there's really no ending for the show, so we'll just say goodbye. All right, guys. I'm so glad we had this time together. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> All right, thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, probably see you next week. I think we're good to go, right, Dave? We've got nothing on our way, right? Correct. We'll have other big news for you next week. I also, I think Nicole is going to join us. She'll talk about her new book. <laughs> Um, and I've got new secret news that I'll just unleash on the world next week. I have to see what that Whoa. is. All right. Now we're wow. going to have to stay w laying awake every night going, what's the big secret? What are you doing yes. to us, Trey? <laughs> <laughs> well, Thomas will find out. He's always an insider. And I hope you'll join us next week too, Thomas, yes? Sure. Yeah, why not? Good. <laughs> Gino? <laughs> Everybody back. go out and join Snapsation. Yes. Snapsation. Yes. Snapsation. Get on it. Okay, bye everybody. See you next time.